Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest. Breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King on you, Husky. <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush and the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge. Of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. There are lots of ways to save money. You still hear about people tucking it away under mattresses, putting it away in a favorite piggy bank or a cookie jar. But there's a much better way to save, and that's by buying United States savings bonds through the payroll savings plan. It's the real easy way of saving money. Your employer automatically sets aside a certain sum of money each payday, any amount you name. It's all done before you get your pay, so in that way you never miss it. When enough is accumulated, you receive a Series E savings bond, automatically too. There's no bookkeeping or budgeting problems for you. It's also the smart way of saving. Series E savings bonds pay back $4 for every three you put in, even more if you hold them past maturity. Yes, there are many ways of saving money. But today, while you're thinking about it, join the 8 million other Americans who find it easier to save through the automatic payroll savings plan. This message is brought to you as a public service. Thomas Herbert Ashley Smythe, age 10, tried not to cry as they lowered his father's coffin into the grave. His dog, Rags, a huge Newfoundland, stood beside him. The boy found some comfort in patting the shaggy coat. We always used to say, chin up. That's what we must remember, Rags. A rough hand dropped on Tommy's shoulder. and The boy turned to look up into the bearded face of Jonathan Steele proprietor of the Deuces Wild Cafe in Skagway. All right, boy, it's all over. Let's go. Well, couldn't Rags and I stay here for a little while? No, come along. Yes, sir. Mr. Steele, did my father have any wages coming? Of course not. What gave you that idea? Oh, I just wondered. There isn't much heat in the cabin. You're not going back to the cabin. I'm not. No. I sold the cabin to take care of the funeral expenses. Wasn't there any left over? Any money? Mm, little, but not enough to take care of what your pa owed me. Oh, he owed you. Plenty. Hey, stop that sniveling. I'm sorry, sir. I just can't seem to figure out where Rags and I shall live if the cabin's gone. Well, I'll have to put you up. What do you suppose? There's a room in the back of the kitchen at the cafe. You'll stay there. Oh, thank you, but sir. But don't think I'm going to feed you for nothing. Oh, no, sir. You're big enough to work. Plenty of odd jobs around. You'll do whatever Bart tells you to. Yes, sir. I don't have to put you up. Remember that. Turn your keep or out you go. I'll do my best, sir. In the weeks that followed, Tommy worked for Black Bart in the kitchen of the Deuces Wild. From long before breakfast until after supper. One night, Jonathan Steele welcomed an old friend to Skagway. A man named Red Corey Steele had known in the underground of San Francisco. Pickens aren't as good as they used to be before the Marines arrived, Red, but you and your men will make out. We're not staying here. Oh, heading for the Klondike right away? That's where the gold is. With the prospect and his hard work. I didn't say anything about prospecting for gold. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I get it. What kind of an outfit do you have? Plenty of supplies, but I could use a good lead dog. <laughs> They're expensive. I'll pay $500. Hey... Maybe I can fix you up. You have dogs? I have one, a big Newfoundland. He'd make a fine lead. Come on outside, I'll show them to you. Right. 
following morning, when Tommy discovered that Rags was gone, learned that Steele had sold him, he ran down the street to the cafe owner's cabin. Who's there? It's Tommy Smith. Look, you get back to the cafe and tell Bart that I won't be disturbed for anything until noon. Bart didn't send me. They say you stole Rags. What of it? You had no right to sell him. He's my dog. Who's been feeding him for the past two months? I've worked for his food. You haven't even earned your own. But where is he? Who did you sell him to? You forget that dog and get back to work. I won't. Where is he? <laughs> He's on his way to the Klondike. Does that satisfy you? You have no right. Oh, shut up. Tommy returned to the cafe, and Bart forced him to go to work. But all that day, he was making his plans. The next morning, he was gone. When Steele was told, he only laughed. <laughs> so he's gone after his dog, is he? That's a good one. He'll come crawling back before long, and when he does, I'll give him a beating he'll remember. Double is, I've been too soft with that young one. Tommy didn't return to Skagway. He found friends on the trail. And three weeks later, Buck Harris, one of the Northwest Mounted's mail sled drivers, deposited him at police headquarters in Dawson. There, Sergeant Preston questioned him. Don't you have any family? Oh, I don't think so, sir. My father and mother came from England, but I was born in New York. We didn't have any relatives there, and then mother died, and father and I came to Skagway. Father worked for Mr. Steele until he died. Well, haven't you ever been to school? Oh, yes, sir. I went to school in New York. Wouldn't you like to go to school again? Oh, but there are no schools up here, are there? Oh, yes, Tommy. We have one in Dawson. But I suppose that's only for boys who have homes. We may be able to find you a home, son. A home for orphans, sir? No. As a matter of fact, you're the only boy we have in Dawson who doesn't have a family of his own. Your home would be with some friends of mine. Oh, you're very kind, sir. But now that I'm here, I'd like to start looking for rags. Couldn't I do that? The Northwest Mountain makes a specialty of finding lost dogs, Tommy. You leave that to us. Rags isn't lost. Mr. Steele sold him to a man named Red Corey. So Buck said... We've had a letter from San Francisco about Red Corey. They're looking for him already. Is he a crook? A bank robber. Oh, he'll beat Rags. We'll find him and we'll find Rags. Now I'm going to take you to meet my friend, Suspenses. Oh, I don't like to be any trouble to anyone, sir. You won't be. Believe me, Tommy. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. You should have been at the ball game today. I saw three home runs. And guess what? I got one of the home run balls. Fellas and girls, why don't you get a free baseball ticket? It's easy. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Your free ticket is waiting for you right now inside packages of Quaker Puff Wheat, Quaker Puff Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, and Quaker Paco 10, which has two free baseball tickets. Yes, if you are 12 years or younger, just bring mom or dad or another paying adult and see wonderful major or minor league baseball games free. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Get as many free tickets as you want. No mailing, no waiting. When mom buys breakfast cereal, just be sure she gets the kind with a free baseball ticket inside. That's Quaker Pop wheat and rice and Muffet shredded wheat. You get two free baseball tickets inside Quaker Paco 10. So don't miss out another day. See the star players wallop those home runs. Now to continue. Anne and Amos Spencer welcomed Tommy into their home. They bought him clothes and sent him to school. And every Saturday, Amos took the boy into the woods outside of Dawson on hunting trips. Tommy was happy for the first time since his father's death. Happy except for one thing. The Northwest Mounted found no trace of either Red Cory or Rags. The weeks slipped by, and then one day, early in January, far to the south in Skagway, a sharp-featured Englishman walked into the Deuces Wild and asked for Jonathan Steele. Uh, you wanted to see me? If you're Jonathan Steele. I am. I am Harold Ashley Smythe. Oh, that was the Duke's name. I take it you're referring to my cousin, Anthony. Yeah. A coincidence that he should have worked for you. How's that? Your name was mentioned to me in San Francisco before I learned that you had any connection with my cousin. Oh, he kept my accounts. A bookkeeper. Indeed. Hey, what's this all about? Um, is there some place where we can talk quietly? You may find it extremely worthwhile. 
Yeah, sure, my office. In here. Go on in, have a seat. Oh, well, I understand that my cousin is dead. Yeah, that's right. Last October, pneumonia. But he had a son. Yeah. Where is the boy? I don't know. He worked for me for a while after the Duke kicked the bucket and then he ran away. Could you find him? It's possible. He went after his dog, and his dog was heading for the Klondike. Uh, Mr. Steele, I have here a thousand dollars. It's yours. If you'll consent to go to the Klondike and find the boy. Uh, I don't know. I, I have a business. Wait, here. I haven't finished yet. I shall also pay you ten thousand dollars if you provide me with adequate proof that the boy is dead. Dead? That's right. You want me to kill him? I shall pay 10000 for proof of the boy's death. Mm, that's a lot of money. Isn't it? What's so important about the button? Are you interested or aren't you? Sure, I'm interested. Then all other questions are inconsequential. Here's the 1000 That much I'll pay in advance. Now, when can you start? Tomorrow morning. I shall accompany you. Tomorrow morning it is. On a Saturday, a month later, Amos Spencer was busy and Tommy went hunting alone. It was late in the afternoon when he started for home. And as he reached the top of a ridge, he saw some men sitting around the campfire in the valley below him. There were two dog teams huddled in the snow close to them. And Tommy, always looking for rags, was attracted by them rather than the men. He could hardly believe his eyes. It is. It's rags. And there's Mr. Steele. And one of those men has a red hair. It must be Red Corey. Oh, the sergeant, I must kill him. At that moment, the men in the valley rose to their feet. And as Tommy watched, they started up the valley toward the north. Oh, there's no time to get the sergeant. I'll have to follow them. It was after dark when Amos Spencer walked into headquarters. Oh, hello, Amos. What brings you here? I'm worried about Tommy. Worried? Why, only yesterday you told me he was getting along fine. Well, he's as considerate a boy as I've ever met. He wouldn't do anything to upset either Anne or me, and that's why I'm worried. What about he went hunting today by himself. I, I thought it'd be all right. He knows the woods now, but it's dark and he hasn't come home. Of course, I realize it's only six o'clock and he may have simply lost track of the time. Still, there's always the possibility of an accident. I'll get King. I'll go to your place and find something to give him the scent. A good idea, Sergeant. I'll show you where we go to hunt. We'll find him. Tommy followed the men through the valley and into the forest to the north. As long as it was light, he had no trouble. Their sled tracks were clear. By the time night had fallen, they were heading west along the banks of Double Cross Creek. Tommy kept on, and at last he saw a cluster of buildings ahead. It was Gold City, now a ghost town. But there were lights in the building which had once been a dance hall. For the first time, Tommy was undecided. It's a long way back to Dawson, but I must make sure that Rags is here. The dogs were in back of the dance hall, and they started to bark as Tommy drew close to their run. He hesitated. Then he saw Rags and hurried on. Rags! Rags, you go! Oh, 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 you're happy to see me, aren't you? Well, I'll get you out of here. You come back to Dawson with me. Then I'll tell the sergeant about this. Hey, there's somebody up in the dark right? Don't worry, I'll take care of him. Oh, Rags, now we can't get away. Well, it's nothing but a youngster. It's Tommy. <laughs> We're in luck, then. It's hard to believe. Where have you been, Tommy? In Dawson. Well, please let me go, Mr. Steele. I was only talking to Rags for a minute. I wasn't going to do anything. <laughs> I'll bet you weren't. Come on. You're going to meet your cousin. My cousin? Oh, second cousin, I guess. Anyway, he's a relative and he's inside. Come on. Tommy was marched into the dance hall. Harold Ashley Smythe was eating supper with two more of Red's gang. When he saw Tommy, he jumped to his feet. <coughs> you found him. How'd you guess? His features. He don't look much like his paw. No, his grandfather. Where? How? He was out by the run talking to his dog. Are you really my cousin? I was your father's cousin. I didn't know I had any family at all. You said I looked like my grandfather. Where's he? He's dead. Oh. So, that's it. Did the old man leave much, Harold? That's none of your business. I think it is. We, we've made our agreement. But I'm not sure the amount is right. Some of those English estates run into a lot of dough. We can't discuss it now. Not in front of him. All right, if you're squeamish, we'll get rid of him. 
Joe, tie him up. Put him in one of those upstairs rooms. It's cold up there. You're freezing to death. Oh, we can't let that happen. Just yet. Throw a blanket over him. Come on, Sonny. What are you going to do to me? I was only talking to Red. My cousin. Shut up. Red, you and your men have been cutting on this deal. Now, don't you think uh, we should up the price? If you do. The price is $10,000. Now, let me explain something, Harold. It'd be a simple matter to get rid of the boy, put a bullet through him, and throw him down some ravine. It'd be simple, and we'd be perfectly safe. But you insist that the body must be found. Of course. That makes it dangerous. You you could make it seem like a, an accident. It's possible, but dangerous. I think you should pay us uh, 20000 Oh, very well. But 10000 is all I have in ready funds. You'll, uh, you'll have to wait for the rest. Okay. We'll draw up a paper. You agreed to pay us 20000 Are you insane? Do you imagine I put anything like that in writing? You'll have to. I want something I can put in the mail and send to the police if you should feel like Welching. A paper like that would incriminate you as well as me. <laughs> Not the way I'll word it. Hmm. Oh, very well. Write your paper. I'll sign it. Then let's get on with the job. When King led Sergeant Preston and Amos Spencer to the valley where the men had made their camp, when the sergeant had a good look at the tracks leading out of the valley, he turned to Amos. See what these mean, Amos? There were two sleds, a number of men. The smaller footprints belonged to Tommy. Could he have been captured by some outlaws? No, see here. The men were riding the sleds from this point on, and Tommy's footprints followed the sled tracks. Who could the men be? The question I'm asking is, why should Tommy follow them? Could Tommy have seen his dog, Rags? Red Corey could have been one of the men. That's possible. You'd better go back to Dawson, Amos. Why? You've been finding it hard to keep up with King and me. Oh, I'll do better. From now on, we're going to move faster. You believe the boy's in danger? What he's doing is dangerous. We must catch up with him as quickly as we can. All right, Sergeant. I'll turn back. See you later. Go on, King. Follow the trail. Good luck, Sergeant. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, why aren't you fellas and girls out at the ballpark these days, watching those home runs walloped into the grandstands, eating peanuts, popcorn, and hot dogs? Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. All over the country, kids 12 years or younger are seeing major or minor league games free. All you do is bring mom or dad or another paying adult, and you get your free baseball ticket immediately inside packages of Quaker Pop Wheat, Quaker Pop Rice, and Muffet Shredded Wheat. You'll find two free baseball tickets inside Quaker Pack O' Ten. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. So be guest of your favorite team at the ballpark. Rush to the store with your mom and grab free baseball ticket packages of Quaker Pop Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Pack O' Ten, which has two free tickets. The more packages of these delicious Quaker cereals you get, the more free baseball tickets you get. Now to continue. When the sergeant and king reached the ghost town, the outlaw's dogs had burrowed in the snow and were sound asleep. But a light still showed in the dance hall. King headed straight forward until a sergeant laid a restraining hand on his head. Easy, boy. I'd like to get inside that building without being seen. They circled the dance hall. There was a second-story balcony that ran completely around it, and the glass was gone from most of the upper windows. The sergeant found an easier entrance. The kitchen door was hanging from one hinge. The sergeant opened it. Once inside, King trotted directly to a flight of stairs that led to the second floor. At the top of the stairs, there was a door. This led onto a balcony above the large main room of the dance hall. The sergeant could hear voices. Hold it, King. It's settled, then. Make it look like a hunting accident. Use the boy's own gun somewhere in the woods near Dawson. We'll have to wait for snow so our tracks will be covered. It'll be snow before morning, Steve. Good. Heat up some coffee, Joe. Okay. <laughs> the sergeant drew back from the balcony railing. The man with the red hair is Corey, and he called the man with the beard Steel. They're planning to murder Tommy King. Find him, boy. Find him. <laughs> the sergeant kept close to the wall as King headed for a door that opened off the balcony. The 
The sergeant tried it, opened it, slipped inside. Tommy was lying on the floor, covered with a blanket. Tommy, Sergeant keep your voice down. They tied my hands and feet. Don't worry, you'll soon be free. I don't think I'll cut these ropes. I may need them. There's a whole coil of rope over in the corner. Oh, good. I may need it all. There you are. Now, tell me what happened. I saw Rags and I followed him. But they caught me out at the run. One of the men is Red Corey. Yes. And there's Mr. Steele and a man named Joe and two other men. And my cousin. Your cousin? He said he was. The one with the mustache. Yes. He said I looked like my grandfather. But my grandfather's dead. My cousin was arguing with Mr. Steele about how much money he left. Money? That's usually the motive for murder. They want me to freeze to death. You're not going to die. Tommy, can you find your way back to Dawson alone? Oh, of course. Follow the creek to the game trail, and then the trail through the fire. That shouldn't take you more than a couple of hours. No, sir. I want you to go straight to headquarters and tell the inspector to send Constable Downey and Constable Phillips out here. I may need help before money. You're staying here? Yes, Tommy, but you're getting out right now. Come on. At four o'clock that morning, Joe was sleeping on the floor close to the stove. Red Corey shook him roughly. Wake up, Joe. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. yeah. It's starting to snow. Get the kid. Steele, Red Corey, and his confederates prepared to leave the dance hall. But Joe didn't return with a boy. Red yelled at him. What's the matter up there? Hurry up! Hey, what's that? The only answer from the upstairs room was what sounded like a man pounding on the floor. Come on, we'll see what's going on. Bring the lantern out, get it. Joe was lying on the floor, bound and gagged. Red pulled the bandana from his mouth. What is this? I don't know. Something hit me as I came through the door. When I came through, I was laying here. Where's the kid? You mean to say he knocked you out? I don't know. Where is he? Up with your hands, all of you. What? what? You're under arrest in the name of the crown. At that moment, Sergeant Preston stepped through the window from the outside balcony. King jumped into the room after him. Sergeant Preston. So we're under arrest. What for? You're wanted for bank robbery in San Francisco, Corey. All of you will be charged with conspiracy to commit murder. Drop your guns. Not a chance. Red threw the lantern directly at the sergeant. He ducked and it sailed through the window. The sergeant fired and dropped Red with a bullet through the shoulder. The room was plunged into darkness. The other men ran out and down the stairs to the first floor. As the sergeant started after them, a volley of shots made him drop to the floor of the balcony. Then there was silence. In the dim glow cast by the stove, the sergeant could make out the front and rear doors of the room downstairs. There were no men near them. They were waiting under the balcony, waiting for the sergeant to show himself on the stairs. We know of another way to get down there, don't we, boy? <laughs> Come on. Silently, the sergeant and King made their way along the balcony and through the door that led to the back stairs. So wait outside, King. You'll guard the back door and I'll guard the front until we get reinforcements. Stay there, King. Stand guard. But the sergeant had hardly reached the front of the dance hall when a fury of barking broke out in the rear of the building. He ran back. King had knocked one man down and pinned him to the ground, but the others were trying to harness the dogs. They saw the sergeant rounding the building, and once more the silence of the night was blasted by pistol shots. The sergeant's aim was better than the outlaw's. He knew that he had hit at least three of them before he was hit himself. And that was the last he remembered. Until he opened his eyes to find himself lying on a blanket near the stove inside the dance hall. King was crouched at his side. Oh, hello, boy. Take it easy, Sergeant. Downey. Yes, everything's under control. A bullet makes your scalp, but you'll be all right. What about the others? We found one of them tied up upstairs. Red Corey wounded. There were three others with bullets in them out to the dog run. We caught the Englishman as he was trying to make a getaway. Good work. Fine work, Jim. You and King did the work. Sergeant, I have some news for you. And I'm going to insist that you get some rest. News? A lawyer arrived in Dawson last night after you'd left with Amos. He'd come all the way from London, and he was looking for Tommy. Oh, his grandfather's estate. Yes, and what an estate. It includes a castle and a title. Tommy is now the Earl of Milford. Wonderful news. <laughs> What's funny? Tommy refused to be a lord and live in a castle unless Rags could sleep in his bedroom. Oh, <laughs> was his condition met? It was. Wonderful news for Tommy. Well, everything's settled, King. This case is closed. <laughs> Sergeant 
Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. The warm weather and long daylight hours mean more fun out of doors, especially for the younger members of the family. But sometimes it's not possible to be outside, or it's important to relax and sit quietly for a little while. Then is the time to tune to Mutual. Every weekday afternoon at 5 o'clock, there are programs of imaginative entertainment that bring all of the adventure and excitement of the wide open spaces. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon, member of the famed Northwest Mounted Police, braves the dangers of a wild and lawless territory in the days when gold was king. With his faithful dog, Yukon King, Sergeant Preston is a challenging example of courage and daring. And following Sergeant Preston every day, Monday through Friday, is Bobby Benson. Every weekday afternoon at 5 o'clock, the doors open wide on a whole world of adventure with Sergeant Preston of the Yukon and Bobby Benson, both on mutual over most of these stations. While following the trail toward Selkirk, Sergeant Preston and his great dog, King, saw a figure lying on the trail. Another man bending over him. Oh, Lucky. Oh, boy. Jim Pickens. What's happened? Sergeant Preston, I, I didn't expect to see you. It, it's my partner, Fuzzy Norton. He's been shot. Oh. He's still alive. I'll give first aid and take him to the doctor in town. And Jim, I'm taking you with me as a suspect. Jim had a motive, and it threatened Fuzzy, but declared his innocence. Can Sergeant Preston get proof against Fuzzy's killer and escape the bullet that's meant for him? Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company. Makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. America.